Hi friends, today I am giving a lecture on differences between procedure oriented programming languages and object oriented programming language POPL and OOPL. To develop any project for our application, we have to use two types of languages. First one is procedure oriented programming language and the second one is object oriented programming language. So these two languages are used for developing any application or a project. Okay, now we go for what are the main differences between POPL that is procedure oriented programming language and of OOPL object oriented programming language. Okay. First one. First difference. A programming paradigm that is based upon the concept of procedure calls called POPL procedure oriented programming language. So in the case of procedure oriented programming language to develop any application or a program, we have to use procedures or a functions. So that type of uh, programming paradigm called as procedure oriented programming language. Next, in the case of object oriented programming language, to develop an application or a programming, we have to use uh, classes and objects. Okay, classes and objects. That type of programming language is called as object oriented programming language. Okay, next. Second difference. In POP, program is divided into small parts called functions. In the case of procedure oriented programming language, so to develop a program, so we have to divide the total program into some several number of parts, each and every part called as a function. Okay, next, in the case of a book, program is divided into parts called objects. In the case of object oriented programming language, so to develop a program, we have to use the total program can be divided into some number of objects. Okay, each and every part is called an object. So, in the case of object oriented programming language, program is divided into some several number of small parts, each part called as an object. Okay, next, third one. POP follows top-down approach in program design. So, in the case of procedure-oriented programming language, so, first main program is there. After that, sub-program or a, a function definitions are there. Okay, first main program is executed. After that, a function definition or a sub-programs are executed. So, because of that reason, so the programming flow can follow top to bottom. That is called as top-down approach. Next, in the case of uh, object-oriented programming language, it follows bottom-up approach. Okay, in the case of object-oriented programming language, first we have to define the class. After that, we have to create the objects for the class. But execution starts from the main program. In the main program, uh, main program is in the main program objects are there. So from that point, we have to execute the program. So it follows bottom to top order, top flow. So because of the reason, we can say that oops follows bottom up approach. Okay, first class definition is there. After that main program, in that main program, objects are created. Program execution starts from the main program. Okay, in the main program, objects are created. So bottom to top 
execution flow is there in the case of object oriented programming language. Next one, fourth difference in POP functions communicate with each other by passing parameters. So, in the case of procedure oriented programming language, okay, the programming paradigm based upon the functions, okay. So, each and every function can communicate with each other by passing the parameters. That is, we are taking the main program, that is main function and another, sub, another, uh, another function definition is there. So, how the communication flow between the main program and sub program by passing the parameters. So, in the case of procedure oriented programming language, functions are communicated with each other by passing the parameters. Functions is nothing but main function to sub function, main program to sub program. Okay, next one. In the case of object oriented programming language, Objects are communicate with each other by passing the messages. Okay. By passing the messages, okay, one object is communicated with the other objects. Okay. Next, fifth point. In the case of POP, overloading is not possible. Overloading is nothing but one method name with a different number of uh, parameters and we have to uh, operate on different parameters by using only one method. One method with a different number of parameters, we have to perform different number of uh, operations. Okay, so that type is called as overloading. In the case of procedure oriented programming language, overloading is not possible. But in the case of uh, uh, object oriented programming language overloading is possible. Here there are two types of overloadings are there. First one is method overloading and the second one is constructor overloading. Okay. Same method name can be used for performing a different operations by taking different number of parameters. Next, same constructor is used by taking different number of parameters and performing different number of operations. So, that is a method overloading and constructor overloading. So, these two are possible in object oriented programming language. Next, sixth difference, POP needs less memory. So, procedure oriented programming languages can take only less memory. Once we have to define a function that can be that can be used many times. So that because of that reason, POP needs less memory. But in the case of whoops, needs more memory when compared to the procedure oriented programming language. Okay. Next one, POP does not have any access specifiers. So, but in the case of OOPs, there are three types of access specifiers are there, public, private and protected. Okay, to access the data of a particular class, we have to use some access specifiers that are public, private and protected. But there are no access specifiers in the case of procedure oriented programming language. Next, next difference. POP does not have any proper way for hiding data, so it is less secure. In the case of procedure oriented programming language, to send data from one place to another place, we the data can be sent in the form of plain test. Plain test means whatever the data we have to send from one place to another place, the same data is also sent without any encryption mechanism. Okay. So, because of that reason, it is less secure. In the middle, any third party person can hack that data. So, POP is less secure because there is no proper way for hiding data. But in the case of object oriented programming language, suppose we want to send data from one place to another place, we have to use some encryption mechanism 
So here the plain test can be converted into cipher test. Okay, so it is more secure when compared to POP. OOPS is more secure when compared to the POP. Okay, OOPS provides data hiding concept. Here data hiding is nothing but some encryption mechanisms are used to convert the plain test into cipher test. Plain test means whatever the data we have to send, that data is called as plain test. Plain test can be converted into cipher test because of that reason data is hiding. So it provides more security. Okay. Next difference. In POP, most functions use global data for sharing. Okay. Here most of the functions use a global data for sharing in the case of POP. So there are uh, 10 functions are there in one program. 10 functions use the same data. Okay. Because of that reason, we have to uh, declare that uh, variables for our parameters as global. Then the 10 functions can use that data. Okay. Next. In the case of uh, OOP, so whatever the data we have to require for a method, we have to uh, we have to declare that data in that function. Whatever the object is there, that object can be accessed that is associated with it. Okay, the data of an object can be accessed only by the functions that are associated with it. Suppose one function is there. In that function, one object is created to access the data from that function, only this object is used. By using this object, we have to access the data in that function only. Okay. Next one. The examples for procedure-oriented programming languages are C, Fortran and Pascal. The examples for object-oriented programming languages are C++ and Java. And Python is also a object-oriented programming language. Python is also. So these are the examples for object-oriented programming language. And these are the examples for procedure-oriented programming language. Next difference, in POPL, we use a concept called platform dependency. That means all procedure oriented programming language contains platform dependency feature. Suppose on one operating system, we have to execute one C program. Okay, whatever the executable file we are getting, that executable file can be uh, can be executed on other operating system. It is not possible. We are not getting any output. So because of that reason, POPL gives platform dependency feature. That means in which platform we are uh, using to develop a program and execute a program, the same platform is used for executing that program again and again. Okay, so the executable program can be executed on other operating system. We are not getting any output. Okay, so hence we can say that all POPL satisfies a feature called platform dependency. Whereas in the case of object oriented programming language, Suppose on one operating system or a platform, we have to develop one Java program, then it creates a dot class file. This dot class file can be executed on any operating system installed on any computer, then we are getting the output. So that feature is called as platform independent. But here, on one operating system, we are writing a program and execute that program. .exe file is created. That .exe file 
can be run on another operating system or our platform we are not getting any output so because of that reason pops gives platform dependency feature but here dot class file can be executed on any platform hence we can say that ovops possesses platform independent feature so it is one of the most important feature okay so oops oops is nothing but platform independent pops is nothing but platform dependent next one fourth difference in a procedure oriented programming language large data can be transferred from client to server in the form of bytes so byte by byte data can be transferred from one client to the server okay whereas in the case of object oriented programming language so large data can be transferred all at a once okay at a time all the data can be transferred from client to the server in the case of object oriented programming language but here in the case of pops the large data can be transferred between client to server only byte by byte but here all data can be transferred at a time next one next difference in pops data is available around the functions so the whole data is available around the functions okay but in the case of object oriented programming language the whole data is available around the objects because ovpl uh, only depends on objects in the case of pops data is available around the function the total whole programming paradigm depends on the functions okay so these are the main 13 differences between uh, procedure oriented programming language and object oriented programming language so thank you thank you for watching this video if you like this video please share this video to your friends and classmates if you like this video please subscribe my channel name so dipala srinivas rao please suggest your comments to improve my channel thank you